Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here to talk about education in international collaborations. And I would like to give my thanks to the chairs of the session to invite me. Well, this is not a common topic, but we live in non-common era. It's the era of multi-wavelength and multi-messenger astronomy. The cooperation in interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary collaboration is part of the development of the discipline. This approach is also an opportunity to innovate in education, opening a new window to the knowledge using the strategies designed from the beginning of the experiment and which are part of the project management. Let me share with you a simple example. It's Pierre Observatory, uh, seated in Malarwe, Argentina, is the largest observatory to uh, measuring the ultra high energy cosmic rays. And the shared collaboration, integrated by 18 countries, are more than 500 um, researchers and scientists, uh, has measured and uh, analyzed uh, an unprecedented number of uh, these events, studying the extensive air showers. Um, it's a, an important topic because uh, you cannot detect the tiny particles uh, because they at high energies the flux is so low that direct detection is almost impossible. So you need to detect it indirectly um, through the cascade of secondary particles produced by interaction of the cosmic rate with air molecules at the beginning and with the water inside the surface detectors. So it's not a simple thing to share with the people, but think in, inter in big collaborations. The collaboration organization is um, integrated by task groups, task and co-task leaders. The activities are planned. They are discussed inside the task, presented to the collaboration board, and finally executed or implemented. So one of these tasks is education and outreach. In this sense, the big projects bring together expertise from the frontier, scientific research, and educational research in formal and informal science learning, along with the users, and in order to demonstrate how even Nobel Prize winning um, and the science devoted by them can be integrated in school curriculum. Uh, to do that, you need a framework, and um, the framework uh, which we use is the design thinking. The design thinking is a non-linear process, user-centered design, and uh, is part of the approach to, to how to communicate, how to teach uh, the, the contents of the um, research we are doing to the to the people. There are five main steps. You need to follow all these to reach the target, the final target, the people. You need to empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test any idea. The, this, uh, this framework is very useful when you have the vision of the visitor center. Pierre Rocher, for example, has a visitor center inaugurated in 2001, and it is a living space permanently upgraded in the same way and with the same vision that we apply for the detectors. If you can um, see the, the curve of uh, the visitors, uh, the number of visitors along the years, you can see some kind of wave, and each rise of the curves is connected with the upgrade of the, of the visitor center. In this sense, you maintain alive this space. And in this particular case, the visitor center welcomes an average of uh, 8,000 visitors a year in a very tiny town of 14,000 inhabitants. When you make uh, uh, all the activities uh, in a, a permanent connection with the community, you have very successful stories. And as part of Pierre I can mention, for example, the participation in the parade celebrating the anniversary of the town, top, uh, top right, and the design of the Argentinian stamp for 2007, the installation of a school, the secondary school in Malarwe, and of course, the organization of science fairs. Also, 
in a frame of this approach of, to the community, we participated in the design and installation of the first digital planetarium in Argentina. And we worked very hard to protect the dark sky. And for this reason in Malar, where they are, they are, there is an ordinance to, uh, for dark sky protection. Mm, at, the, at the bottom, you can see the visitor center, almost a 360 uh, image, uh, is the first interactive visitor center in a scientific institution in the country. Also, it's possible to participate in very specific uh, topics, like, for example, the event uh, connected with the eclipses. You can use different tools and devices by in the in, if you are talking about education, the teacher networks to reach thousands of students with very important topics, all of them in the curriculum at the primary and secondary school is one of the most important ones. To highlight the importance of the work of the um, development, uh, the science development by women, also you can um, um, be part of uh, nets and activities uh, in all the countries of the collaborations uh, connected with the role of the women of the women and in this sense um, well we prepare a, a several a several activities uh, exhibitions uh, guides and a steam in general steam initiatives um, in all the countries uh, which are part of the collaborations uh, after a long, a long time, <laughs> the collaborations uh, collect a big amount of data. And one of the purpose of the observatories is to open data, to permit the people to collaborate, cooperate in the analysis of the data even, and uh, to know how to produce the final results. You need to prepare a set of tools to make easy the activity to the people, but the most important thing is to put all available for everyone. Part of this um, activity to, uh, the connected to open data is to prepare the master classes to explain how to use this data, how to uh, use the tools to analyze the data, and what, um, what means the final results. When you are part of the big collaborations, it's very easy to contact big collaborations. So the net is bigger and bigger each time. And one of the projects um, in Europe right now, the, one of the most important projects in Europe is Frontiers. Frontiers is, uh, uh, is, it has as purpose to, to uh, give uh, the students the Nobel Prizes physics, but to talk about this into the classroom. And in this sense, in the last year with the pandemic, Frontiers proposed a set of um, um, virtual visits and invite different big collaborations like the CERN and Pierre And we started a great, a great adventure of the virtual visit synchronous and also offline. Well, as you can see, you, you have the opportunity to show the observatory, to present the, the science behind the people, and uh, also to show spaces normally forbidden for the visits. In this sense, you can visit uh, the assembly building, the workshops, and uh, cover the whole area of the uh, headquarters, because normally you just visit the visitor center. Uh, when you when you are part of these activities, you can also have an immediate feedback with the people. You can see the list of visitors. You can have the chat, and you can uh, organize a very interesting visit with the face-to-face, uh, -face, even through the screen, with the people, and transmit if you want uh, by streaming the visit. When at, at the end of the day you analyze the statistics, you discover that in only one visit, uh, there, there were more than the visitors in two months of normal and face-to-face -face visits in the observatory. Based on that experience, we are now working in a new collaboration called CUBIC. Uh, it's uh, an acronym, uh, acronym, which means Q 
Q and U bolometric interferometer for cosmology is an original instrument designed for measure with the high sensitivity and precision the polarization of the cosmic microwave background with a very novel experiment design. And it is assembled right now in Salta and will be installed in uh, La Puna, in La Puna, Argentina, Puna, at uh, 5,000 uh, 5, um, meters above sea level next year. This is the instrument, just to, to show you the, the, the new design is a cryostat. We need to measure very, very tiny variation in the, in the temperature of the uh, CMB. And next year will be installed in, uh, in San Antonio de los Cobres. But before the installation, we started the contact with the community through several activities connected with education. The first one was a workshop um, about light pollution um, as part of uh, the set uh, the series of uh, activities on light pollution we have a, an ordinance now in san antonio de los cobres devoted to protection of dark skies after the first workshop we also participate in several activities of uh, training teachers in uh, astronomy mm, the main topics are the topics at school so uh, we we work with eclipses and uh, uh, moon phases and even with observations. Well, uh, the final goal for us is to have a visitor center at that altitude and uh, in the northwest of Argentina. But the big collaborations normally are uh, all together when you or when they want to share big discoveries. Here you can see a Gabriela Gonzalez, from LIGO and Esteban Roulette from Pierre during the communication of discoveries. This kind of uh, activity is a normal one. And if you, if you are part of the big collaboration, finally, you also can have the opportunity to discover big things. For example, here is the announce of the uh, first um, neutron star merge discover, uh, which uh, was made by several collaborations in a, in a few in a few hours and produce finally um, probably the first uh, multi messenger paper uh, published uh, in the history of the astronomy but as consequence of this you have a lot of uh, activity between the people non specialists it means the journalists and um, the people who produce uh, new new posters and um, stickers for the people and as consequence of that, as consequence of the science, you can also participate of big science, big collaborations, um, citizen, um, citizen scientists. Uh, so um, in this case, I would like to show only one. I mentioned frontiers, but here is Rainforce, which is a, a project um, devoted to engage and support citizens to cooperate with researchers and contribute in the development of new knowledge. And um, in this sense, this collaboration put all together four main groups, big collaborations, uh, like the gravitational wave researchers at uh, EGO, the deep sea hunters, the um, um, particle uh, researchers at uh, Large uh, Hadronic Colliders, and the cosmic muons images, uh, which are uh, connected with the um, studies of volcanology and archaeology. These four um, big collaborations are preparing demonstrators, which will be installed at Suniverse to invite people to help us to discover new things in the nature. As conclusion, if you want, um, I would like to say that formal, the formal frame, framework and goals that conform the roadmap map of education of non-traditional topics and detections are part of the activities of big collaborations. Cooperations in the development of science, uh, citizen scientist proposals combining the know-how of different groups, institutions, and collaborations is also deployed, deployed and is part of our activity. Education and communication with the public is performed using different tools, but not only websites or brochures, not. 
you have the possibility to offer the access to open data, to produce guided visit, to make satisfaction surveys, and also offer master classes. Participate in a collaboration means to assume several responsibilities not only in research, but also in education and outreach activities. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is a talk about, about education in big collaboration and is a journey of a thousand miles which begins with a single step. The possibilities along that road are, as the wavelengths and the messengers, multiple, but uh, the most important thing the multiples are all the challenge that you can assume. Thank you very much for your attention.